next one. Here we go. Who is going to get that all-important hole shot? Have a look at Gibbs trying to go around the outside. He is on a mission right now. of survival here in this first moto and he has come out on top. Welcome to the picturesque one thaggy, located two hours southeast of Melbourne on the stunning Bass Coast. Take in the beautiful sights of this seaside town, a hive of activity where the beaches are gorgeous and so is the local produce. And I tell you what, I hope you're hungry because it is time to jump on your bike and go racing. The wait is over for round one of the 2024 Penrite Pro MX Championship presented by AMX Superstore. Hi, my name is Kate Tech and with me is 11-time national motocross champion Lee Hogan. Hogs, how is this for the weather gods blessing us and how about the energy here for round one? Well, one thaggy, it's just, it's the perfect battlefield for round one to start the series. But the weather, this is Victoria. I'm a Victorian boy. I don't expect this. This is, <laughs> this is postcard weather. This is beautiful. All right, well, let's hit back to where we took off last with Dean Ferris winning his fourth sensational MX1 title. He did it last year in 23 on board the production Yamaha, all by himself, put the team together. But now he's back in the CDR Yamaha fold under the watchful eye of Craig Duck, where we know he's won a lot of his championships. Can he do it again? He's in a good position. And into the 2024 season, where the silly season has pretty much gone into overdrive for the MX1 class. It sure has. We've had a lot of people changing colour. I, th I guess the biggest one is Luke Clout's departure from Yamaha to Empire Kawasaki. He's looking great. He went well in qualifying out there. How is, is he going to go in the race? We're going to have to find out. So many other people changing colours as well. And we've had a couple of very fun fast MX2 riders make their way up to the big class. The MX1 category is the absolute pinnacle of our sport. It's what all our riders aspire to try to make it to the top to get that number one plate and do the absolute best that they can do. For 2024, we have got what I believe is the deepest and strongest MX1 field that we have ever seen. And we're trying to break it down into the three main separate categories. Our newcomers, our established stars, and our vets, the old school lads that always keep us on our toes. And we start the ball rolling with the established stars, the riders that we expect to see up towards the head of the pack. And you can't look any further than reigning champion and CDR Monster Energy Yamaha rider, Dean Ferris. I had a really, really good preseason. Uh, of course, a sign of Craig towards the end of last year, so I knew what I was in for. Uh, there was no surprises, so to say, and um, yeah, it's been a really smooth transition across to CDR, and, and we've just been moving forward and ticking boxes for this whole preseason. so it's, it's been going really, really good. Last year's second place rider in the championship, having moved from the factory Honda team to now the CDR Monster Energy Yamaha team, Jed Beaton. And once again, back on board the Boost Mobile Honda, Kyle Webster. After spending years on board the Blue Machine, we now have Luke Clout on board the Empire Kawasaki. I kind of needed a fresh start and uh, I liked their vision with that and I've been happy since day one, honestly. And, uh, you know, it's probably the, the, the best I've felt coming into a season, so I'm excited. Without a doubt, for me, the most exciting part of these three categories is the new blood. The new riders that have jumped up into the MX1 class in KTM of Nathan Crawford and the Honda rider of Wilson Todd. These riders bring that rivalry into the MX1 class this year and both of them have the potential to stand on that top step at the end of the 2024 championship. The vet riders are our fan favourites. They've been around forever and they just keep getting better and better each year like a fine wine. And of course, we can't look any further than the big guns, Kirk Gibbs, Brett Metcalf, and of course, Todd Waters. More so, I'm not just jumping on a plane and turn up the start line and being like, man, what am I doing here? Um, I'm prepared. I'm ready to go racing. As you get older, that hunger to succeed doesn't leave. So I'm, uh, it's gonna be fun. 
Well, there you have it. What we believe is the three separate categories for this year's MX1 class. Danny Ham, tell us, who have you got picked to finish at the very, very top at the end of the year? Well, this is an interesting year. It's really a bit of an unknown at the moment, I feel, Hoves. There's so much talent out there with the changes. But if I was to pick anyone, I'd say Ferris is going to be very strong. But after talking to some riders, Jed Beaton I'm going to run with. He's a rider that can go across all different types of terrain. I think he could be a strong one. We've gone for a bit of a safe bet there. I'm going out on a little bit of a limb here and I'm looking back to Wilson Todd and his win in his first ever MX1 class at Coolum. So let's see how Wilson goes. That's our thoughts. Let's see how they finish at the end of the season. We're here for the Michelin track preview for one Faggy's round one of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championships. Now, this track here, it provides an absolute nightmare for the sand specialist because while it looks like it has a little bit of a sandy top level to it, it actually has a very, very hard base. The bike dances around and does all kinds of stuff. Likewise, for the hard pack specialist, the top layer moves around everywhere and gives them no confidence whatsoever. This track here provides so many curveballs for the riders and the mechanics. This year for 2024, they have prepared this track so well. It's been watered, it's been ripped. We're gonna have plenty of passing opportunities, big jumps, and cannot wait to get the season started. Technically, this circuit is a difficult one for the riders. It's a, a track that really tests the skill level of these riders with the blend of hard and soft pack styles of riding that they need to do to be able to achieve a great result on the day. This particular part of the track you can see right here, it's a little bit more clay based. So you're gonna get some big, deep, hard formed ruts. And then we go into the softer part of the track towards the back end of this circuit. The area around here simply has been so dry and this would have to be one of the warmest one thingy races I've actually been to. So it's going to test the riders out a lot more this weekend. We are probably going to see that really hard base come into effect, but you can see right here underneath us just how much water and preparation the guys have done for the track and these ruts already are just so deep. This is going to develop a lot of lines, a lot of bumps, a lot of passing opportunities and again, really test these riders out over the weekend. We find ourselves here at the very tail end of the lap with just two corners to go before you get the chequered flag. Now right here in this corner is one of the most iconic corners domestically here in Australia for our circuit. Now, so many block passes, takeout moves have happened in this corner where the inside comes around and meets up with the outside. Even the lap riders don't know where to place themselves to try to keep away from the action that's happening at the head of the pack. However, if you can make it through this corner unscathed, tick that box, you've just got two more corners to wheel it on through to the chequered flag. Well, that's one lap around one thaggy here, thanks to Michelin tyres. Well, it's almost go time and it's getting nervous time for these MX1 riders as we welcome Danny Ham back to the commentary booth once again after his 100 metre sprint. Great job down there in the starting line, Danny. Watch your vibe down there. We'll get into that in a second. First of all, let's take a look at the Thor MX1 lineup. Jed Beaton, Luke Clout, Kyle Webster, Wilson Todd, Nathan Crawford. Kirk Gibbs, Dean Ferris, Metcalf, Waters, Rogers are your top 10 through that qualifying session. Zachary Watson, Joel Evans, the list of names goes on. This is the pinnacle of our sport. This is what the riders aspire to make it to. Our Thor MX1 class is where it's at. Absolutely, and to answer your question, it was pretty serious down there. There was uh, a lot of serious faces, not much looking around. Everyone was focused on what they're doing, and right now they are focused on that 15 second board because we are about to get the first of our Thor MX1 races underway. Moto number one, 2024. Who is going to get the upper hand going into the first turn first? 
What a jump out of the gate from, is that Kyle Webster? Webster. What a mammoth hole shot. Enormous hole shot. It looked like he had a bit of a challenge from the inside on some Yamaha riders, but Webster, man, this man means business as he leads him away on lap number one. Look at that, around the outside. That there is the newly signed Kawasaki rider of Luke Cloud on number four. Is that number 20, Wilson Todd, back there in second place, a Boost Mobile Honda 1-2 at the moment. So those bikes rocketing out of the gate. But what a good start from Luke Clout on the Empire Kawasaki. The WP hole shot going to Kyle Webster by an absolute eternity. He was gone, no doubt, in that one. Oh, the nice line to the inside. Fourth place, Jed Beaton, our fastest qualifier. And not just by a little bit, he absolutely blitzed the field in the qualifying time. The hole shot, sorry, the, the pole shootout, a second faster than anyone else, absolutely flying, as he now moves himself into third place, right behind Wilson Todd, and we're going to get into the mindset of these riders as we go through this lead, but right now they are just trying to work out what's new on the track, what has changed, and they have thrown down a lot of water since they were out on track last. Well, it's great to see the big hitters up at the head of the pack. Jed Beaton back there in third place. And Cole Webster, I know Dean Ferris, he's our reigning champion, but we don't necessarily expect him to come here to Wonthaggy and dominate, do we? The two big hitters for Wonthaggy, we expect Cole Webster and Jed Beaton, and they're both up in the top three. Man, just watching those last, uh, sorry, those riders are a little bit further back. There were some elbows being thrown everywhere going into that Turner, forcing those lines. There is Ferris. I think it is coming across the line just there, the finish line. There is the beater of Leroy Rogers, who was in the pole shootout. And look at this, the speed already from this guy. We saw this last year as well. Webster just out quickly to a early lead in this one. He just needs to keep it nice and clean right now uh, and try and build that lead because this is where the battle is going to be coming from. The, uh, the 14 machine of Jed Beaton behind Wilson Todd. Well, there's no surprises here with this early race pace from Kyle Webster. What he needs to do is he needs to minimise those mistakes and certainly none of those crashes that we saw last year. Do not want to put the commentator's moz on him, but anyone that knows Kyle Webster, anyone that knows the one thaggy track knows that they are two peas in the pod. Here we go, that's number 16. It is who uh, has come and missed there. Braden Krebs. Well, look at this, wasting no time at all to the inside. Beaten, where did he find the room to make that one? Todd looked like he was going to swing around the outside, but it wasn't to be. So already we are starting to see a new reformed Jed Beaton on this uh, CDR Yamaha Monster Energy bike. The Yamaha looking very comfortable underneath him as these riders early days lead, starting to settle into their pace. And these two riders here are certainly guys that know how to find that rhythm early in the race and charge late in it. Yeah, correct. Let me just give quick props to Kirk Gibbs there in the top five on board that factory gas gas machine. He's made the change across from Motor X K uh, KTM from last year. So we have a little bit of a look at this replay and a very well executed pass set up by Jed Beaton. Well, there was some determination in that one. You saw how deep he went into the jump face there before he started getting on those brakes. And yes, you're right, we see Gibbs there, a good solid start. Quite often last year, we saw some great results out of Gibbs, but he was always coming from deep in the pack. So good start to this one. If he can find that form early in this race, he could be a major threat coming to those closing stages of moto number one. Yeah, there's certain riders out there that have got that much pace. They can afford to get a mid-pack start, can't they? Just some of these riders need to get a good start to be able to stay in tow. Let's head down to Kate. I just saw Nathan Crawford pull in. He wasn't wearing any goggles and he had a face full of dirt. Ooh. So he grabbed some new goggles off his mechanic, but I'm not quite sure how they were removed. Yeah, right. So maybe with the amount of water that uh, has got thrown down on the track, Maybe a massive puddle has splashed into his face and completely taken off maybe Teros or Rolos, whatever the system is, and they weren't working. So we will keep an eye on where he is exactly. Well, actually, I can see it right now. 28th on the track at the moment. He's not the only rider by the looks of it, as there is another rider in getting the new fresh set of goggles as well. Yeah, that's not the way you want to start your race here. The first race of the season for the Thor MX1 category. 
But Luke Clout here putting in a good race. He got, a, got himself a good start. He's still up there within the top four. He's trying his best to keep toe here. Whoa. A little bit of a step out sideways for Wilson Todd there. That would have got the heart rate up a little bit. For us, <laughs> I'm not sure it did for him. I don't think if you ask him at the end of this race, hey, that was a bit of a moment. You go, what moment? Yeah, what are you talking I don't know about? What talking about? He looked like that was just fully planned as it slid over the top, giving himself an unintentional scrub across the top of that jump. They knock down yet another lap. On the left, the intervals from our riders. Webster leading this one, 2.9 back to Beaton. Todd, a four-second gap back to him. And then Clout, Gibbs and Ferris. These guys are the ones that we're going to be battling it out, I feel, as we get deeper into this race. 25 minutes plus a lap for the Thor MX1 Moto number one. This, their first race of the 2024 season. And even though this isn't going to be pivotal as far as the championship goes, the old cliche comment, you can't win the championship in the first round, but you certainly can lose it. These guys don't want to be having a DNF. They don't want to be throwing themselves onto the ground hard and potentially bending up the bike. You get no points here at round one. It is a long chase back. That's right, it's, uh, it's difficult to come back from that. And mentally as well, when you have such a bad round, first round, oh, Levi Rogers, unfortunate for him, off the side. Looks like he's trying to get some levers back into position, so possibly he's gone down. Not the way he wanted to start his day after such a good start through qualifying. Wilson Todd, though, only a lap ago, we saw Clout right onto the back wheel, and he's reopened that gap, Lee. Is that a mistake by Clout? Oh, here we go, Rogers down. Just lost the back wheel across the top of that. Uh, was that the last of the rollers, I think? It looked to be the last of the rollers. And likewise, during our live streaming in the first part of the day, we saw a couple of big crashes that were all to do with a knife at the front end. That was purely back end. Yeah. So looking at our timing screen, we can see that our leaders, 148 matching times is their fastest times, 148.5 to be exact. That last lap around 149.0 for our leader, 149.3 for second place. So Webster has stretched it just a little bit, but beaten. He is determined this year to go out there and grab these big results. And uh, he started the day so perfectly with his qualifying sessions. All right, well, we are only moments into this first of the MX1 Moto number one. Quick little break when we come back, plenty more action. And we are back doing uh, this MX1 Moto number one. 13 and a half minutes to go here on the Thor MX1 Moto number one. And the first opportunity for these gun riders, these superstars, to lay it all on the line. Try to get themselves maximum points here in race number one. We see Todd Waters on the screen. That's a final rider. Take a look at this pass. This was the pass that was made moments ago by Waters. Just got a better drive out of that corner to the inside. And he was able to get that pass made on Gibbs. Well, just as you say that now, he's edged up even closer, Danny Ham. He looks to be on a bit of a charge. Yeah, so we're coming through some of the lapped riders, but no doubt the intensity of Beaton appears to be a little bit stronger than we do see out of our race leader, Carl Webster. Love these lines that Beaton's finding. He is exploring the track. Oh, there was a mistake by Webster just coming out of that corner. So it could be just little things like that that has slowed him up over those last couple of laps. That was not lapper related. You know, that was just a line by himself. So maybe we are starting to see these little things come into play. Now, am I tripping here or, or are they coming across lappers thick and fast here? So this fast. Is, and look, we are so early in the race here compared to when we're usually coming across. It's one thing to have one or two lappers in the way. We're coming across mid packers here. Ferris only one and a half seconds now off the back of Klaus. Yeah, so that's where the next battle, although look at the battle up the front, only one second between our race leader and beaten the last interval. So it has tightened up massively. There is Klaus into the right-hander there, the AMX right-hander with Ferris. You can see him not far behind there. They're the two riders on screen at the moment. The green Kawasaki of Klaus to the outside. Tries to swing it around. Ferris. Ferris is just so smart and crafty. When it gets to race time, he is able to switch things up so well, find those new lines, 
and uh, he uh, really shines at the end of the motos. Here is our race leader again. Oh. oh, and look at this, beaten, as we said. It is closely. Yeah, look, and that little passage of play there for Kyle Webster looks to be like he was rushing a bit. He's got some intensity happening now, and I think he can start to feel that pressure from Jed Beaton now. Jed, if he sees that and he starts to see that bike kicking around a little bit, he starts to see that he's perhaps getting up inside the head of Kyle Webster, that's just going to just feed more confidence into that number 14 rider. There is our third place rider of Wilson Todd. A lonely ride, very lonely ride. 14 behind, Impressive. nine in front. He has got a great gap either way. Oh, look at the speed through there. You and I know how much effort it takes to reef on those bars, to roll through the whoops like that, although I could never make it look that pretty. If you're Kyle Webster and you get to that part of the track, tell me you don't want to make the most of those <laughs> rollers. You're like, hey, I've got the rest of the track that I need to deal with. I am from WA. I'm making the most of these things. Beaten 1.8. It is back and forward between both of these riders. There is Ferris. He is just there the whole time. You cannot, you cannot rest and just relax when you've got Dean Ferris sitting behind you. No, you can't, because it doesn't matter what track you're on, what surface it is, he's going to find some good lines, and he's never going to give in. He knows that this is one of the tracks where he's probably not going to score maximum points, but he's going to do everything he can to salvage a good weekend here. Back to the head of the pack again. And Kyle Webster now, he's just stretched that gap out. It was only a few seconds ago that I had a bit of a look and we were 1.2, 1.3 seconds. He's bumped it up to 2.1 seconds now. And how good is that drone shot? Yeah, fantastic. Gives you a really good overview of all the different lines for all these riders. A little bit wide there that time for Webster. Wasn't probably his ideal line. Nice, see the way he bounced into that rut just there. And, uh, yeah, in behind these left riders, so certainly playing a massive part. But it is, uh, it's part of the game. You need to be able to get past these guys if you want to win. And that shot right-hand turn that we just saw Cole Webster exit, that's the line that we saw Jed beat and find that real creative one. Ducking up the inside, keeping it on the nice chocolate cake, no bumps and just beautiful dirt. So I think there's a couple of lines on the track. Now, I'm not sure if Konski and the Honda team will have the access to video to be able to study up as we see another charge being put on from Beaton. But I honestly believe there's a couple of lines that Kyle can pick up that will totally transform his lap times at the moment. Yeah, I agree. There's a couple, again, it looked like, ooh, maybe that's just, just the, hook. The, the hook in the rut that makes it look like we're not seeing it perfectly every time. Beautiful jump up and over, almost oh, off the track. He is off the track. Wow, that could have been disastrous. If he got stuck outside of those banners, he would have had to go right around that berm. So very lucky to get back on the tack. And you've got to think, Beaton has seen this. He knows that he is making the leader push himself to a limit where he could be a little bit out of his comfort zone. Beaton is going to put the pressure on now. Well, I like how Kyle Webster almost used the start of those Penrite banners. If you have a look here, he almost uses the banners as the start of a berm. Watch this. Launches this first double and then a little bit wide. Come here. Spots the start of the berm. Where's the banner? Yeah, there we go. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> uh, didn't even face him one single bit, but that has allowed this to tighten up a fraction. This here would be the second last lap right now. Both of these riders will know they are running out of time and they need to make things happen now. For Webster, he knows he's only just got to set down a flyer of a lap and it could potentially give him enough of a gap and break the spirits of beaten. But Lee, it doesn't look like it. This corner coming up here, I want to see the two different lines. Let's see if he gets it again. Once again, how is the drive from Jed Beaton through there and then up the right hand side? Didn't seem to change the gap too much. So we couldn't see what Kyle Webster did that time. I wonder if he nailed a separate line. Into the long left pen right turn just here. Oh, Webster in behind a lapped rider. Didn't hold him up too much though. So manages to get through there. Again, Beaton is right there. If Beaton can get just a little bit closer, that is really going to force that pressure onto our race leader. Yeah, look at this stage here. I honestly believe it's going to take a mistake from Kyle Webster because one thing you know is how fit he is. He could do a 40-minute moto without slowing down whatsoever. So it's going to take a mistake. We saw him off the side of the track. That could have been what brought him unstuck and caused Jed Beaton 
to make that pass. I think whether Beaton can get to the very, very close rear end of Webster, that's one thing. Being able to get past him, he's going to have to force some kind of a mistake. Last lap board out. One lap to go for the Boost Mobile Honda rider, Kyle Webster, to start things off the right way here at Wonthaggy. Well, Webster knows this last lap is all important. That last lap that he just completed, 151.4. So he's only just off his fastest lap time around here. And that is enough to open up a 2.4 second lead. You can see it visually right now. Lee, at this point, do you think Beaton will be going, I need to keep pushing flat out to try and close that down at 2.4 seconds? Is he close enough to mount a, a realistic charge? Or do you think Beaton could say, good ride, pick up second points, well, and let's get him in the next one? All I could say is, wow, that last lap, what a testament to the fitness and work ethic of Kyle Webster. I don't think his lines were coming together quite as good as Jed Beaton in the latter stage of this race. But when you're in second place and you know you've given everything you've got, you're at your absolute rev limiter, and you see your main competitors go drop you a second there, I think you kind of just go, well, what do I do? Do I risk it another 5% and go, hey, I'm going to throw the towel in? I think quite clearly this shows how comfortable Jed Beaton's doing it because... He hasn't slowed down. He hasn't thrown the towel in. He's putting himself in a position where if something goes wrong and a mistake, and it doesn't necessarily have to be a mistake from Kyle Webster. We've got lap riders in the mix, right? Yes. Anything can happen. We've only got a couple of corners to go. So as they enter in through rolling whoops for the last time, a little bit gentler through the whoops that time around is our race leader, the Honda rider of 96. Kyle Webster has been looking for this win here in Wonthaggy for a long time. One more turn to go. MX1, Moto number one, 2024. First race goes to Kyle Webster. What a race for the number 96 machine on board the Boost Mobile Honda. Let's take a look at the Thor results. MX1, Moto one. Kyle Webster with a fantastic win from Jed Beaton. Wilson Todd, Dean Ferris, Luke Clout, good riders roll there in fifth. Todd Waters, Crawford, all the way up into seventh place. That is a mammoth effort. Kirk Gibbs, Brett Metcalf, and Joel Evans. Welcome to the top ten, buddy. That's a great performance. Yes, a tip of the cap there to Nathan Crawford having to go grab those goggles. Looking forward to seeing what he's got for us in moto number two. Absolutely, a good start from him. I know he'll be, although he'd be disappointed with having to do that, he would be pretty pumped with the fact he was able to make his way so far back in the field from where he was, and that sort of confidence really can shine in the next moto if he gets himself a good start. Charlie Creech, the Western Australian, back there in 27th place. The rest of our riders, as we see through here in the list, up to our top 40. And on that note, we will head down to Cape Peck. Yes, with Kyle Webster on the Boost Mobile Honda. Congratulations. The first MX1 race for 2024. You got the whole shot. You got in the lead and then you held off that pressure from Jed Beaton. Tell us about your race. Yeah, Jed was there the whole time. It was uh, it was hard work. The, uh, the lap riders were, were something else then. And, you know, I understand it's, <clears throat> it's hard to move around. So definitely made it challenging and the, uh, the track is gnarly. So... That was a tough race. <clears throat> Moving into Moto2, what's the strategy? Same thing. Good start, clean laps, and uh, try and navigate it a little bit better, I think. But, um, yeah, Stokes started the season that way. And, uh, you know, big thanks to everyone who makes it possible. It's a long pre-season. So, uh, yeah, let's keep doing it. Nice work, Carl. Well done. Thank you. Thanks. Let's take a look at the Thor MX1 lineup Moto 2. Jed Beat, Luke Cloud, some of the biggest names in the sport. Kyle Webster, Wilson Todd, Nathan Crawford. Waters, Rogers, top 10. So many fast guys in this one. Watson, Evans, Holroyd. And the list goes on through the rest of this field. Big class again here for the MX1. The Thor MX1, of course. Moto number two. And we are set to get this one underway as the 15 second board is up for the final race here today of these guys. Five second board is up. It is pressure time as we wait for the revs to come up and the gates to go down. Who's going to launch out first and who's going to get the hole shot? Can we see another typical Kyle Webster hole shot? It is another Honda at the head of the pack, but which one is it? It certainly looks to be Kyle Webster. Ferris, what oh. a line from Ferris through the first turn. And 
Empire Kawasaki rider Luke Clout. You can throw a blanket over these three. And who is that that's just coming to the party? I think that's is Wilson, that Wilson Todd? Todd around the outside. No, it's Nathan Crawford. Oh, what a start to I, the race. I tell you what, Crawford wasn't that great going into the first turn. However, he was muscling his way, just like we saw Webster muscle his way back to the inside there and back into third place. So. Big hitters up the front at the moment. Where is Beaton? I have not seen him come through yet. We'll look at this shot. Maybe that was him in about fifth, uh, sorry, about sixth or seventh. Wow, what a start. Seventh place on our timing. What a rebound from Dean Ferris, like a true champion would. And we only spoke about it in the last race. How rare is it for us to see Dean Ferris without even a either a whole shot or a second place into the first turn? At least a good start for him. And oh, how was Clout with that little in-swinger off the top of that? And uh, I saw Metcalf go the opposite way. Here he goes, Webster, though, big wow. row around the outside. Well, what momentum that was. That was just so brilliant. There we see Jed Beaton. Now, where does he feature here? I'm trying to pick up where he is. He's in, uh, he's in fourth place still. So, yes. Yeah, he picked up a couple of places oh, pretty early on. Big mistake from Wilson Todd as he ducks up the inside there. Lucky for him, there was a nice little exit clause. A nice smooth line, at least for him on the opening lap. Oh, look at Clout, quick glance over the shoulder. I tell you what, don't worry about that because Beaton is on the charge. There is Waters a little bit further back as well in about ninth place. But Ferris opens up this one. There is Beaton, Beaton. Oh. He's just finding lines yeah. wherever he wants. That's what we said in the first moto. He could turn where he wants. And right now we're seeing it once again inside of everything. He's turning off absolutely nothing. Let's look at the WP. Sh oh, again, he makes that pass. So the WP whole shot award, my apologies. Carl Webster, as we saw, beaten to the inside, making his own lines, that bike dancing across the top of that jump. He's just renting his own pieces of terra firma out there, isn't he? That no way, it's like no one else is allowed to touch this bit of dirt except for me. It's brilliant to see. How was the drive out of that corner? It's lovely to watch, no doubt, into the Fox. Right hand turn. There is Cloud. He's dropped back a little bit. And we see Ferris lead the way in this one. Now, will we see Ferris put up a massive fight here? Or do you think we might see Ferris, if he gets challenged, uh, maybe sit behind these guys and, and learn what they're doing because they were so fast in the first moto. With these early stages of the race paint the picture, don't they? There's so many important things that can happen in these early laps. What's going to happen here? Is Kyle Webster going to be able to leapfrog, get past Dean Ferris real quickly, and then all of a sudden leave Beaton to have to deal with his teammate, which, you know, highly likely won't be able to be too aggressive with? Or will Jed Beaton be able to get past both of them and try to get out a little bit of a gap? So many things can happen here. And you know what's the easiest thing to do in these early stages? Have a silly little tip over. Yeah, it's easily done, no doubt. There is Crawford back there in fifth place. He sits just in front of Kirk Gibbs as they come over the finish line just over now. There is Crawford Gibbs on the number five gas gas machine. Brett Metcalf comes over. Wilson Todd. Todd Waters, uh, your top eight riders that just came into shot. Tell you what, though. Every now and then we see this. Uh, Dean Ferris keeps stretching it out every uh, every so often. Well, our top three all in the 150, 150.6, 150.3, 150.3. So Ferris only lost 0.3 of a second to our second and third place rider there. A little bit of a mistake there it was from Ferris, and that's going to allow Kyle Webster to sneak up onto the back. Now, they've stretched it out ever so slightly yeah. now from Jed Beaton. Yeah, so considering those lap times you just read out where Beaton was the fastest, there has to have been a mistake in that little section of the track for Beaton to be so far back. Let's have a look here and see what we've got. So in the background, not quite sure where we're looking here. Oh, oh. another one of those crashes. Really hard and slippery. That was a back wheel step down for yeah. no reason. That's had a mind of its own. So, Ferris still leads the way in this one. The Thor. Oh! MX1. Go. Both legs off the bike. That was close. That's as close as you'll see Ferris going down. So, again, I bring it up. Does Ferris, if he gets the pressure, just maybe pull back a little bit and see what these guys are doing? Or does he continue to push at this level where... I don't think he's out of his comfort zone, but certainly we're seeing these little mistakes here and there. Um... Maybe it's just the Lions. I don't know. It's it's a t uh, like we heard before. It's a tough track right now. 
Look, I think he's just trying to find his lines. Perhaps did he try a different line and, and then noticed there was a bit of a ledge that caught his front wheel. That was one of those ones where you could easily have your bike go one way, you go another way, and hence both legs coming off. He managed to save it, and he turned it into one of those ugly mistakes that don't really cost you much time. Yeah. But they're the best ones to have. But look at this part of the track. Every time Ferris stretches it out all the way through here. And then as we get into the tight part, just past the mechanics, that's where we start to see Webster and the rest of the crew close back in. Now, I've got to remember, too, that where Webster... Whoa, what a line! That, that, where did that come from? We're going to a replay Having here. A replay, oh, this is the moment. Yeah. Oh, I stepped uh, out of the rut. Yes. So, has that pass been made just as we went to that replay? We'll see. First of all, moment. if we can get that on replay, did you see how fast... Hang on. We ha yeah, so, oh, yeah, so Jed Beaton has passed Kyle Webster. Did you see how hard he stuck that inside rut? Yes. That was that was magazine cover shot material Absolutely right there. Absolutely crazy the way the commitment he had going into that turn. Here we All go. Right, let's We're going to see it. He is way back here. Not even in sight. Not even in sight. Bit, oh, wow. Just set himself up perfect for that pass. Fantastic move there by Jed Beaton and really showing that he means business here today and for this championship. He now has his sight set on his teammate and the outside here has been what is so good. Oh, so oh, smooth. How's the scrub? Oh, look, and, and made the pass as easy as that. What a mission is he on at the moment. Now, to me, that looked like a little mistake. I don't know if he really meant to go quite that low off the tabletop. Did he sort of semi-slide out up the takeoff? Yeah, well, he didn't even really make the down no. did he? <laughs> <laughs> he could have come into that so much hotter. What are you doing, mate? Yeah. Honestly. Wow, what a move it has been. So we oh, think, oh. Been, oh, you don't want to do that just as we're praising you, buddy. Landing, that was a massive one. Landing ramps are good. They, oh, <laughs> yes, they are, Lee. <laughs> they certainly are. <laughs> Quick little break when we come back, plenty more action. Here is the battle between Wilson Todd and Kirk Gibbs. Gibbs was looking strong there, but Wilson Todd just swung around the outside. He has moved himself up one more. In fact, he has just equaled the leader's lap time that last lap around. Absolutely flying. So he is on a mission as well. Next in his line will be this rider here of Luke Cloud, the number four by Kawasaki rider. And Todd right there. That there is Gibbs on the number five Gas Gas. Like I want to ask the question, is there some kind of clause that these three riders sign that mean that they must be together on the track? As we once again see, see uh, we got Gibbs, Metcalf and Waters, 7th, 8th and ninth on the track. You just can never separate them, can you? Let's go down to Kate. Yeah, just an update on Kyle Webster. I spoke to his crew chief about his strategy and whether he can catch Jed Beaton. Crew Chief Mark Sladek said he's just holding back a little bit now, uh, but it, at the 10 minute mark, he will drop the hammer because he does have more in him. Okay, well, that will be interesting to see. And I believe he does have more in him for sure. As to uh, how Jet Beat reacts to that, once we reach that 10 minute mark, which we're just about to get to, this track is getting more and more beat down. It's only so hard you can push before things start to react and things go pear shaped Well, this next lap time is going to be interesting because that lead is extended a couple of seconds in this lap alone. Is that a, uh, a mistake or a hold up for Webster or is that beaten already front running this, uh, this charge, this 10 minute charge at 11 minutes and trying to break the spirit of that second place rider in Cole Webster? Well, it, it's very much uh, sort of similar to what a Jet Lawrence would do almost in then trying to control that lead. Once you get it to a certain point, it's very, very hard for someone back there in second or third place to try to take, you know, six, seven seconds gap, right? You don't need to win by 20 seconds, but at the moment, he's got himself a seven second gap. Yeah, four seconds difference is the lap time that last lap around. So massive, massive change. And if he is going to uh, do this charge at 10 minutes, I think he's letting it go too far. Oh. That one. Uh, someone not yeah, no, very no, that's happy. Maybe. Maybe Riley Fitzpatrick can try to uh, pick that up for you around the outside. There goes Luke Cloud. 
and threading the needle on a lap dry that we saw Wilson Todd. Oh, Wilson Todd set that up from the previous corner, oh. did an outside back to inside, and he set that up. That was road race style right there. Yeah, that was brilliant. That is not. That is a Mario Kart arrows thing on the ground <laughs> there. Get you an extra boost going up there. The same line that Ted used earlier on, no doubt. Wow, that was so fast to make that pass. A great move there, and, and uh, that's certainly how it's done. Top five place now, relegating Luke Clout back a position to sixth place. So uh, not a bad ride at all for Wilson Todd back there in fifth place, but continues to be Crawford there in fourth. Now, this is the battle within the battle, and you would have seen with their MX1 package, the head-to-head, -head, the beef that we have between Crawford and Wilson Todd. Well, they find themselves also in fourth and fifth place. As we take a look back once again in the lap times, a 152.3, a 152.4. Very, very similar between our first and second place rider. And as you look at the man on screen at the moment, our current race leader, you can't help but feel that he's in lead maintenance at the moment. He knows exactly what he's doing here. He doesn't look like he's pushing the envelope. He looks like he's well aware of everything that's going on. He doesn't look to me like a rider that's starting to fatigue yet. No, when you've got that kind of a lead at the moment, you seem to have extra energy, don't you? Jeez, what am I saying? I don't have, I don't have that knowledge. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's what I've seen over the years, these riders look like they have. This, from what I'm told. Yeah, from what I'm told, when you've got this kind of lead that you are, yeah, okay. <laughs> maybe you should explain that one, Lee. Yeah, well, maybe I could, but it's that long ago that I can't remember. Okay. So, so right let's, just, let's just both well, look, he, focus he, on what He <laughs> looks very good out there, and he does look like he's doing it with ease at the moment with that 7.7 .7 second lead over Webster. Ferris, 22 seconds back. So those boys at the front are still knocking down some lap times, even though he looked comfortable. A 51 that last time for our race leader. Yeah, and that's just breaking the spirit of poor Kyle Webster back there up second place. Just when you try to remount and pulse, like do another challenge, as you know, we're down. You'd be getting your pit boards. It's telling you exactly. We've got 10 minutes to go. We've got five minutes to go. But we now see three minutes 50 left to go. And then all of a sudden, your main competitor just goes and drops over a second on you in one lap. It kind of... For mere mortals, it's going to break your spirit. I don't know. Is it going to break the spirit of Cole Webster? Because I just don't think he knows how to give in. No, he wouldn't. But surely he's got to recognise that they will be going away. The, the teams will have spoken. You know, if you are in this position, we are walking away with equal points. We're, we're not down. So at some point, he, he would certainly have considered the fact that, yep, second is going to be OK in this race. Just quickly mention Crawford is only three seconds behind Dean Ferris. Um, can I just point out that something's changed here with Beaton at 1.9? Surely that's a mistake. Okay, so is that, that Beaton? That looks like there? Beaton. It, that, that's Beaton that's there. Beaton. So, okay. Something has happened. Something's going on, and you can see a bit of dust coming but let's just watch closely here just to make sure there's no dramas with the bike can't see any white smoke coming out the back of the machine are you trying to spot a flat tire i don't think you're going to tip it into a corner quite that fast if you've got a flat tire so right it's surely it might have been a small tip over or a lapped rider or something but to lose seven seconds it was crazy a, a 159 yeah. a 151 the lap before something's happened now what it does whether whether it's a bike problem or whether it's a body problem and as you called it it's highly likely a mistake whether he went yep. off the track or he had a little tip over either way it's given kyle webster a sniff now as i said Nearly 99% of the world's population would have pulled the pin and settled for second already. And the 1% is still in there snarling like a dog in second place, trying to pounce and make the most of an opportunity. So let's watch here. Does Kyle Webster have a line up his sleeve? Does he have a game plan here as we're under two minutes to go? Edges up next to the CDR Monster Energy Yamaha rider around the outside. Yeah, it looks like the wheels are okay, but certainly he's not even, say it was a tip over. Generally, you would think he would be back up to that pace straight away. He doesn't look like he's found that pace once again. That back end sliding out all over the place. And this track is brutal as Kyle Webster heads for the outside. Slingshot around the outside. It's and pass, this mate. will be a pass. Scrubs to the inside. What a move and why? What has happened? He, oh, sideways for Webster. And, oh, oh, and, and again. again. 
and also through there was uh, um, beaten, was very ugly through that section as well. I seriously think there's something wrong with that bike. I don't know what it is, I really don't, but they're just, there's a reason why this has happened. Okay, so under a minute to go on the clock now, before that last lap to go board will come out. What has happened to me? The bike doesn't look bad. I don't think it has a flat tire. It doesn't look to have lost power. There's not smoke coming. It's not overheating. He hasn't fried the clutch. His lines still seem to be coming together. It doesn't look like the wheels have totally fallen off. So as we see the Honda replay here of the pass, beautiful, well-executed pass, a nice scrub, and almost a couple of crashes here to try to secure oh. that spot. What's this next one? Boom. Wow. The saves. But this is the exact reason why you just don't give in, you do right? Not you never know in. what's going to happen. And this, and so much credit to Cole Webster, just the ultimate warrior. It's the only way that you can really encapsulate him as an athlete. Yeah, wow. So, three seconds, two, one. The time has expired. They will get the last lap board the next time around. Through the pen right left for the last time. And in Pirelli right is our race leader, new leader, the 96 machine on the Honda, Boost Mobile Honda of Kyle Webster, who will come away if he can close this one out. And it's looking like it very much could happen with a 1-1 victory. Perfect score and a six-point lead in the championship. And again, sideways a little bit. That ain't no thing for Kyle Webster, though. He's, he can see that thing 90 degrees sideways. And, not be too much of a problem. He hasn't dropped massively off the back. His last lap was a 53. When you yeah. compare it to everything else, Danny, I'm going to stick with it. I don't yep. think we've got a major okay. bike problem. I think maybe he gave himself a bit of a scare. Did he throw himself off the side of the track? A massive moment at this stage of the race can spike your heart rate. And if you're already on the ragged edge, yep. that can be enough to make you want to come down into the safety zone. And then all of a sudden, when you've got a Kyle Webster all over the back of you, you need to make that call. What am I going to do? Am I going to risk everything or am yep. I going to go safety here? Yeah, wow. Who would have thought that it was going to end this way? Uh, I certainly thought this was Beaton's race. It was looking that way. He was so strong earlier on, leading this one, stretching out a huge lead over the rest of the field. He's still there. He's still there. He is still there on this final lap. Oh, that was very reminiscent of the massive crash that he had in that exact part of the track just one year ago when the front wheel ran high over a ledge. Now, poor Kyle Webster, his heart rate's got to be spiking, not from fitness, but just adrenaline and just going, where is Jed Beaton and why do I have eight lapped riders abreast <laughs> in front of me on the last lap. Can you just give me a break, please? Well, he has certainly shown his strengths here today. Kyle Webster on the Honda, the 96 machine, as he makes his way through this long, sweeping right-hand turn before they drop back down. Great view there, just uh, the shape of those corners and what you've got to do. A little bit of a messy entry there coming in. That outside line, though, we've seen it all day. So beautiful to watch. And oh, oh a couple of kicks on those, on those sharp little bumps. And the final time through these big rollers makes his way through up in the safety of the berm, negotiating his way nicely past fellow Western Australian Charlie Creech. And that, ladies and gentlemen, will be all she wrote as Kyle Webster makes it two wins from two starts. And have a look. You don't see that kind of emotion no. very often from Kyle Webster. He is pumped. He never threw the towel in. He kept grinding away, and he has come out on top. What an amazing return to form also for Jed Beaton. These two, so impressive, Dan. Yeah, Hamm. very impressive and great, uh, a great setup to the rest of this championship. Two wins from two starts. And there we see it, the Thor results, MX1 Moto2, Kyle Webster from Jed Beaton in what was the battle of the century. Dean Ferris holding off the third ahead of Nathan Crawford and Wilson Todd. Plout back there in sixth place. Brett McArthur, solid performance back there in seventh. Gibbs Waters and Zachary Watson. Well done. Good job for a top ten there, Zachary Watson. Zelinski's back there. Evans, Ward, Holroyd and Latmar is in 15th place.
Sam Larson in 19th, Joel Phillips there rounding out the top 20. And a great job from all of these riders here. There we see Navran Grothews there in 24th, Charlie Creech 25th, Robbie Marshall in 27th. I saw him yesterday and I, uh, I said, you sure you really want to go again? And yeah, he loves it, absolutely loves it. He said this could be the retirement year for him. Now, unfortunately, Levi Rogers there on the beater plus 10 laps, so uh, no good for him, unfortunately. Let's head down to Cape Peck. Dean Ferris, P3 for the round. Uh, we saw that front wheel tuck, but talk us through both your motos. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a tough day. <laughs> One thing, he's been my nemesis now for a few years. The day didn't start off good, I didn't feel good. I was eighth in qualifying and practice, and uh, once the gates drop, I, uh, I didn't get such a good start in the first one, and I worked my way through and got my confidence up a little bit, come home in fourth. And then in that one, got the whole shot and uh, I found my flow. It was really good for the first five, six laps before, uh, before I tucked the front. So, and then it was hard work from then on. I lost my flow, but uh, man, I'm stoked to come away with a podium. Uh, you know, a couple of years ago, I come only away with 14 points from this one and it cost me the championship and I've come away with like 40. So really, really good start to the championship. I'm glad to get this one out of the way. Congratulations to Kyle and Jed for riding so good here. You know, this is a home track, but you can't take anything away from him. Huge thanks to CDR, Monster Energy, Yamaha, and everyone that's, that's got me here. I'm excited for this year. Well said, Ferris. Thank you. Thank you. All right, moving over to Jed Beaton. Jed, you're on a mission out there, but talk us through what happened towards the end to lose all that time and, and the lead to, um, to Kyle. Yeah, what could have been, hey? Uh, leading, like, pretty much from the 10-minute mark onwards and then <laughs> had a comfortable gap. Uh, and then, unfortunately, just hit like a small rock in the turn and it bounced my rear wheel out and then tried to save it and <laughs> rode it out for a little bit, but uh, unfortunately went down and then uh, sort of when I got back up, couldn't get back into the flow until like the last two laps. So, um, yeah, unfortunate what could have been, but still good points for today and uh, the team have been great all day. Bike's been good. So, um, yeah, can't fault it. On to the next. Yeah, can't wait. Excellent. All right. Thanks so much, Jed. And Kyle Webster on the Honda. Wow, what a performance from you this weekend. Talk us through that race. You were there till the very end and, and made that pass and, and got the win, the round win. Congratulations. Yeah, I uh, got off to a good start, but just didn't find the flow uh, in the first few laps. And Jed came past and blew our doors off. So he, uh, he was riding really well. And um, honestly, he was probably too far ahead to, to catch up. So when he dropped it, it just, uh, yeah gave me all the motivation back to uh, to go after it. So, unreal day. I can't um, kind of ask for too much more for round one and, uh, yeah, keep this rolling into the second one. Yeah, well, we'll see you at the next round with that red plate. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, just a big thanks to everybody who makes it possible. Obviously, the team, personal sponsors, my mechanic, Matt, Yareev, Sladik, everyone who's uh, been working hard this off-season. Right, thanks, boys. Well, make sure you join us April the 7th as we head to the hard pack and ruddy circuit of Horsham, some four hours drive west of Melbourne for round two of the Penrite Oils Pro MX Championship brought to you by AMX Superstores. And while you're at it, make sure you lock in round two of the My Bike Motorcycle Insurance Australian Superbike Championships presented by Motul as it heads next to Sydney Motorsport Park in New South Wales from March the 22nd to the 23rd. For their, spe for their spectacular night race. Well, what a way to kick off the 2024 race season. Thanks for joining us here at One Thank You for round one of the Penrod Oils Pro MX Championship brought to you by AMX Superstores. On behalf of Danny Ham, Kate Peck, and myself, Lee Hogan, thanks for your company. We'll see you next in Horsham, Victoria for round two of the championship, April the 7th. So be sure to join us. Goodbye for now.